There have been many cases when souls from purgatory manifested themselves to Edvige Carboni, an Italian mystic who was visited regularly by Jesus and the Holy Mother. Carboni stated in her diary that once during prayer, she was visited by Benito Mussolini, the former Italian dictator, who told her that purgatory was terrible for him because he waited until the last moment to repent. According to her, she was later informed by God that Mussolini's soul entered heaven. In the 50s, his wife went to visit Saint Pio, asking him if her husband's soul was saved. The saint replied that she should think of saving herself, as her husband was safe. In another event, an acquaintance asked to borrow money from Carborni. She approached the woman some time later, asking if she would repay the loan, but the woman cursed her in reply. Years went by, and the woman passed away. When Carboni asked the Lord for news about that woman, he told her that she had another eight years in purgatory. Carboni offered suffrages on behalf of that soul, along with her little sister. The Lord then told her the woman would be in heaven the next day. Carboni was born in 1880 on the 2nd of May. On the day she was born, her mother saw a luminous host in the monstrance. Because her mother was very sick, she would tell Carboni that when she passes, to receive Holy Communion every day, and to be very good, because Jesus had shown her a host moments after her birth. A supernatural branding of the cross also formed on her breast shortly after her birth. She received her confirmation at four and made a vow to remain chaste at five. In her grandmother's home was a replica of Raphael's painting of the Holy Mother with the infant Jesus. Little Carboni would climb a chair to reach the image and tell the Holy Mother she loved her and asked to play with her son. She stated that many times she was allowed to play with the infant Jesus, who was very good to her. Because of her mother's poor health, Carboni completed only three grades at school. She had to look after her siblings and do the grocery shopping at night, which scared her. But she once saw her guardian angel, who told her to not be afraid and that she had good company. She said the angel waited for her outside the store before walking her back home and disappearing. Her mother taught her embroidery so she could help sell them and earn some money to help the family. She also spent time in the convent of the Sisters of St. Vincent in Algiro, where the nuns led a course in embroidery. Carboni made her first communion at 11 and was asked by Jesus if she loved him, to which she replied she did. She had thoughts on becoming a nun but took her mother's disapproval as a sign of the will of God. At 16, Jesus and the Holy Mother visited her more frequently. She became a professed member of the Third Order of St. Francis in 1906 and belonged to an association known as the Friends of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. Carboni had spiritual gifts, which included levitation. She also had visions from several saints, including St. Pio, despite the fact that he was alive. He even knew of Carboni and referred to her as a saint. Just like Pio, she also experienced bilocation in 1925, which grew greater during World War II. In 1938, she noted in her diary that she received the stigmata. From 1941, she became part of the confraternity of the Passion of Scala Santa in Rome. She was chosen by Jesus to be a victim soul and generously offered herself for the salvation of others. Jesus asked her for many prayers and sacrifices because many souls were in danger of eternal damnation. Once after Holy Communion, she saw three crosses with Jesus in the middle and the two beside him were empty. Saint Don Bosco then appeared and said that Jesus had given him the task of finding victim souls to repair for so many offenses that he constantly receives, especially because of a modest fashion and for there to be peace among nations. He said the two crosses would be for her and one of her close friends, Gracia, who at the age of 33 consecrated herself to Jesus and offered herself as a victim soul in order to obtain peace during the Second World War. The devil made Carboni suffer in many ways. Sometimes he would break her dishes, mirrors or windows, and once even took the gold fillings from her teeth. But she offered it all to Jesus for the salvation of souls. 
Many times the devil would burn the money she used for shopping and even poured water on her bed, which would later be dried by the Holy Mother. It even tied her to her bed and hit her with sticks. Some of these were witnessed by a friend who could not untie the knots that the devil had tied her with to her bed until the Holy Mother was called. Carboni often fasted and oftentimes only ate a piece of bread. One day during the war, there was not much food to eat, so she baked bread made from flour and ash. Because of the ashes, she got a stomach ulcer, which was later miraculously cured by Jesus. She looked after her family well, but most notably the poor, whom she loved very much. When a poor person knocked at her door while she was eating, she would give them all her food. Carboni spent the last remaining years of her life tending to the sick and the poor. She passed away from angina pectoris in 1952, and in 2017, she was titled a venerable by Pope Francis. A miracle was later attributed to her intercession, and she was beatified in Sardinia in 2019. The suffering that souls go through in purgatory is awful. It's much worse than anything on earth. But the Lord is not bound by time, so praying for the salvation of someone who died years ago is something that he can already take into account at the time of the person's particular judgment. So let's offer up some prayers, masses, and sacrifices for them. We can be certain that once their souls make it to heaven, they won't miss a beat to pray for us too.